Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Hang with me on this episode, okay? Just be with me in this this audio. I am crying for you. Yes, I am. This morning, the tears fell just shy of 6.30 a.m., after morning meditation, I happened to notice a message from a long time client who let me know her father passed away yesterday. It wasn't just one of those things where you hear news and it makes you sad, your heart breaks for someone else. It was one of those things where I have been in the process with her of saying goodbye for a long time. Her dad lived a full life and was a wonderful, truly wonderful person. I have the opportunity to connect, you know, in with the higher selves of individuals that you're in relationships with so that they can provide additional insight into understanding mutual circumstances and situations. When I do this kind of connection, when I'm connecting with the higher self of uh, another person in relationship, it's not to clear up some old secrets. It's not to find out if your husband is cheating. (laughs) It's not to rehash the past in a way that you can then be right so that then you can rest and let things go. Because let me tell you, when you discover you're right about things from the past with another person, whether it be a parent or a brother, a sibling, a a husband, wife, whatever it might be, it doesn't make you feel better. It doesn't magically make your Focus, be released, and all is perfectly well, and you can just go on with your life. No, that's not how it works. It doesn't work like that. Somebody else's wrong doesn't make you right. Somebody else's pain doesn't make you heal. It's, it's a very a unique circumstance. Now, in this case, in this case, working with her and her dad and her and her mother as well and was a very much an inclusive experience i felt very fortunate to be able to communicate things that are difficult to communicate when someone is in a different state of mind, like with dementia or Alzheimer's, for example, or with medicine that makes them not quite themselves anymore. As you age, lots of crazy things happen to the mind. Maybe it's because the mind is so hell-bent on controlling things and keeping us safe for so long, it just can't handle it anymore. It just It works itself out of a job, I guess. With this circumstance, I, I know how much this person's father really meant to her. And I could feel the bond, and I know it, and I've known it for years. And I know how much he means to her. And having him not be in her life now, as an, even as a, a grandmother herself, I mean, I know that it's very sad for her and it is a loss for sure and I know many of you have these experiences with grief and loss and death and to the dying process where someone slowly says goodbye for three years or four years or maybe even longer. And it feels a bit disjointed or 
nonsensical. Like it doesn't really make sense, the patterns of how someone's health goes up and down or why a spirit or a soul would agree to put themselves through so much. Maybe it's just to stick around for us. We don't need that grief guilt either, do we? No, 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 no. We don't need grief guilt. There's so many parts of understanding these relationships that we have with other people that when they die, they transition. The grief is something that truly is very complicated but it can also be exactly that maze that guides you through to a new sense of freedom and of really understanding what love is because love is not confined to a body or one relationship or one role or one lifetime. It is so beyond expanded. It cannot be contained or held into one spot. It's like everything. It's everything. And it's always available to us because it comes from us, inside of us, to ourselves. I wish I could tell you really how important that is. I wish I wish you would just know instantly, oh, okay. That's the key to all of my woes. That's the key to all of my successes. Love. <sighs> inside. When we have people in our lives like this person's dad, It reminds you of the goodness of people, of how precious that love inside another person grows and how it just beams out to support everyone around them. And by support, I don't mean do for you and pay for you and pay your bills for you and tell you what to do and it's always there for you because, you know, you just can't do life. No, I mean the kind of people who are just beaming out the love They live and enjoy life because they watch their loved ones and others around them experience life, enjoy life in the moments, not one time, oh, my life is good or my life isn't good. Not that. It's the ups and the downs, the simple moments. And that's where they find their joy. They're fueled by the love in the moments and the opportunities to exchange the love with others to affirm it in others is what they live for. They don't they would never articulate this like that. People like that that just beam out the love. See the thing is you and I are those people too. We are. We are the ones that can beam out the love. But we can't beam when our flashlight's not on. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Let's turn our flashlights on. Let's beam out the love. Let's understand that we're in relationship with ourselves. First and foremost, ain't nobody going to fix that. Ain't nobody to blame. No room for guilt in this. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. Guilt does not work with love. It simply doesn't exist with it. It can't. You have to choose one, guilt or love. Which one do you choose? I'm going to choose love. It's going to take practice, though, because I'm so used to feeling heavy and bad and responsible for other people and not doing enough or being enough or I could have done better. I could have been better. I could be better. That doesn't sound an awful lot like love to me. That sounds like the mind. That sounds like a textbook definition of successful life. Doing, working harder, being more, showing up for everyone else, sacrificing yourself. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Oh, you're so noble. Mm -hmm. Empaths, you got it wrong. You're confused. The empathy is supposed to be because of you, within you. It's supposed to be that flashlight inside you. We are supposed to beam from within. And we have forgotten how to do that. But in moments like this, I say read a message. And I feel the grief. 
the sadness that death can create for us. I feel really deeply connected to that love inside me that knows that I got to be part of that experience. I knew love through the connections I had and the connections I will continue to have and I will be able to amplify and beam out love to those that I come in contact with that I'm in relationship with as clients as people, as humans I literally cried reading the message (laughs) because I know how much love there is and it's the love that is so touching and so moving and it never dies that I know for sure I know that for sure And I do cry for you, whether we're in session and you share something so deeply that touches my heart. I do cry for you. I do feel you. And with love, I beam out. I choose love in those moments. <laughs> Just like her dad, I choose to be love. It's not about sacrifice. Do not misunderstand. Being strong for other people is not about not feeling. It's about knowing you are love. Love is a strong energy, an energy of strength and integrity and endurance, energy of courage and perseverance, an energy of profound wisdom, an energy of, oh, I had a rough day, but I'm going to lay my head down and rest now, and tomorrow I'll start again, new, fresh. That's love. That's what it is. I'm beaming out to each and every one of you who are listening to this audio love. Whether you are grieving the loss of a loved one, a friend, a relationship, missed opportunities, whatever it might be. Look beneath that grief energy layer and know there is love there find the love and let it beam out so that you can feel it for yourself it will make you feel better a little bit at a time bit by bit beam by beam love This is Bridget. Thank you for being here, for listening to this episode of Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. <laughs>